Today I'm here with indie dyers and bag makers. Coven Collective. I'm Jess. Okay, so what do you do for Coven Collective? I develop colorways, I dye yarn, I um, help sew bags. I do the boring like tax stuff. I'm Casey, all my friends call me KK, so if you like me, you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what do you do for Coven Collective? Um, in the very beginning, I was mostly bag girl. Um, I have the most prolific sewing, eh, I think maybe you actually do Fallon. I have a pretty prolific <laughs> sewing background, um, but we all um, developed a colorway for our first collection. And now, um, I mean, bags, colors, dyeing yarn, and I think everyone would agree I'm kind of the mouth. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will put myself in people's paths. Um, that yeah, shocking, that's right? <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I'm Ancha. So what do you do for Coven Collective? Um, I do, I help sew the bags, um, develop colorways, I have done the logo and I do a lot of the marketing and I built our website. And I'm Fallon. So what yeah. do you do for Coven Collective? Um, I kind of do a little bit of whatever needs to be done. I'm probably the least prolific of anything <laughs> of this group, <laughs> but uh, I'm always present for support. <laughs> I do. I've had a few colorways. I, I sew some bags here and there, but mostly um, just emotional support. <laughs> so all of you have full-time careers. And so what do you do? Um, I'm a physician assistant. I work in a couple of local ICUs um, and I work nights. So oh, I have a lot of free time during the day. <laughs> yeah. So you're here with us during the day right now. Well, I'm, I, my schedule is really good. I work one week on, two weeks off. So I have a lot of free time. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> Because the two of you work together, or you just work for the same company? We, yes to all, we're remote, um, so we work from home, mm -hmm. yeah. and for the same company, mm -hmm. and we were on the same team for the first year that I was there. Yeah. Um, what our, is it that you do? We work with brokers, and we work with carriers in the insurance industry. Yeah. So. We're lucky. Um, I like I I like most of my coworkers. I like the job. I like what I do. Um, I like when my boss tells me I'm doing a good job. <laughs> I put that. I have a folder in my Outlook that's um, things to read when you're having a bad day. No, I do. The mind too. Okay. And what do you do? Um, so I am a mom. I have a nine year old daughter, mm -hmm. and um, my husband and I own and operate a couple of self storage facilities. Um, which is really boring. <laughs> it's very boring. It's dirty, but it's ours. We switch weeks that we work. So I work one week and then my husband is home taking care of our daughter when she's not in school <laughs> and then we switch. So it's That's pretty great. Lovely. So I get a whole week off when she's in school to die and sew and do the things that I want to do. So how did you all meet? Pre-COVID, uh, I mean, very pre-COVID, oh. a month maybe. Um, I went to a knit night at a yarn store I'd never been to. And um, I'd gone maybe once or twice. And then the next time I went, this lovely human being was there. <laughs> and she started talking about Big Brother. And I was like, I'm so sorry. We're like the show? To, the, the show, show Big Brother? Yes. Okay. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We're just going to have to um, get married and live our lives together because. <laughs> um, so we kept in contact through COVID, um, through the shutdown, through everything. And once things started opening up again, they were doing outdoor knit nights. And then Ansha came to a knit night um, a couple months after that at the same place, the same outdoor knit night. Um, she didn't know how to knit. Oh. She was not a knitter. <laughs> she macrames. Is that the right? Is it a verb? Sure. She does macrame. <laughs> she does macrame. Um, and 
KK gifted her a sweater quantity of yarn and said, hey, um, why don't you learn how to knit? And she did. And she made a sweater. <laughs> and she hasn't stopped making sweaters. Wow. <laughs> and then a few months later, I think it was about November, mm -hmm. because we were back inside. I remember it was cold. Um, Fallon, I think, had reached out to you. Uh, another girl that we knew. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. And, you know, just wanted to come along to a knit night. And here we are, what, three years later? So you all met just like kind of hanging out just first, mm -hmm. but randomly. Then how, who like, who kind of was like the first person to go, we should make, like have a business together? I think it was Ancha. Well, you started, <laughs> you started with the bags. Yes, you started. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I remember that now. And then, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. We just I bought supplies and started dyeing, and mess. I messed up a lot. Oh I've God. dyed my hands many times. <laughs> I've dyed my feet many times because I spill on my floor. And step in hot pink dye. It's oh, really God. great. <laughs> How did the name Coven Collective come about? In 2022, um, we went to Rose City Yarn Crawl, and um, that was our first big yarn trip for everybody, right? Um, and we had in the group chat, naturally, you know, there's a big uh, train of what are you wearing? Um, and uh, there were black felt hats for everyone. Um, and it was like, it's the vibe. Um, we'll also be able to like pick each other out in the stores. Cause you know, some of them are quite large. All of them are very crowded during a big yarn yes. festival. Um, and we got a lot, we got a lot of attention and I don't know, but like, you know, people love positive attention generally across the board. <laughs> um, and so that night for dinner, we went to um, a winery in Portland that there's also one in Spokane that we all go to. Um, and we walked in and out of the corner of our ear, that's not a thing, but um, <laughs> you we, we walked by and we heard like um, a stage whisper, like, oh, here come the witches. And we just kind of laughed. I mean, like, it's a vibe. It's fun. You know, like we were all children of like the 90s and, you know, the craft and we're very like enthusiastic spooky season celebrators. And um, when we were talking about making this a real business, um, we had a few options, but I think Coven Collective hit really good for all of us. Um, and then uh, with Ancha's graphic design work, like the logo is just beautiful and it like flows. Um, and I mean, like the collective part was really important to us because it's, it is a collective and it's not, we're, we're all fond of saying like, I'm not the boss, like I don't make the rules. Um, <laughs> what that boils down to is there are no rules, um, but you know, it, it's all of us. So how do you go about developing a colorway when you have four people? So usually we have some sort of theme that we're going with, um, but not always, um, <laughs> but we all have our own little dye studios in each of our homes. Okay. And so we'll get really excited about a theme. Sometimes we have inspiration photos or ideas. Sometimes we don't. Um, and we'll all kind of go to the dye pans with what we have in our heads and dye it up. And then what happens every single time, and again, this is the magic of it, is it works like we won't even like we'll show up together we'll lay it down and we're like this is a collection um and i think it is because you know if you love spooky pink you're a kk if you <laughs> love a, a like mauvey soft that's jj if you want a purple <laughs> ff's your girl <laughs> i'm gonna do like the autumn colors and stuff so and then yeah it just it all comes together we don't end up with like four of the same exact color um but then, yeah, we do get along and we have similar personalities and styles and stuff. So it works. It's cohesive. You know, you can shop by like base and stuff, but then you can also shop by made by KK, made by JJ. And yeah, we all have the JJ, KK, AAFF, um, <laughs> just to make it easy. And and that includes even like, um, I do some bags I call looking glass, mm -hmm. which everybody can sew, but I've just like done most of them. Mm -hmm. So they're under mine, the ones that I've sewn. And then also like, the, the fabric I'm picking for bags is going to be different than the fabric that they're picking. Mm -hmm. So the ones that I've picked. So if you've like 
got a vibe, mm-hmm. you can shop specifically by the maker. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. So if you develop a colorway, for example, will you dye all of that? Or do you sometimes be like, okay, we need a lot of this color. We're all going to figure out how to dye it. Like, <laughs> So right now we all do our own mm-hmm. um, for the most part. There's a few tonals that we can do. But that being said, we have it set up. So like um, during the dye process, we'll take pictures, uh, we'll take notes and stuff. So if we need to, we can, but just to like make it the most consistent, usually if the dyer's available, they'll dye it. Um, but yeah, we, we try to be, we have a shared, we have a shared calendar, we have a shared drive, we have yeah. a shared chat where we can just like keep everything together and then, yeah. So with four people together, there's gotta be some challenges. How do you navigate like communication and just when, when do you have time to get together? I think Ancha mentioned that we we have a lot of shared stuff. So we have a chat that is active all the time, basically. We're in it, in and out of it all day long, not just with business-related things. It's just memes, life, complaints, et cetera. But, um, so we have a constant line of communication open. And then we have a shared calendar. So we know anything business-related is on there. And then we all keep our own personal you know, anything that we just want them to know about is on there. Um, we have a shared Google Drive with um, like tax documents, yarn recipes, um, patterns, like all kinds of different things that we're like, um, that we all want to have available to us all, all times. Um, so I think that it is really, it's really challenging. We're all busy people with busy lives. And as we've said, we have full-time jobs. My job is really limiting because I... I'm completely unavailable when I'm working, Mm -hmm. basically. But these guys always know and they accommodate. Um, If there's something, there are a lot of times that I just can't even catch up in the chat. Like, I just don't have time. And they will, uh, you know, I'll be like, okay, I'm not catching up. What do I need to know? And somebody's (laughs) like this or this. And then done. If there's something important that happens, somebody will text me and let me know. Like, hey, this just happened or whatever. So we're able to keep a really good open line of communication. So as we almost... I mean, and it's been a little spotty this summer because we're more busy, but we, we, we meet like once a week. Um, oh, that's awesome. And we do like a knit, like, knit night, mostly on Wednesdays and Thursday nights mm-hmm. for three or four hours, mm-hmm. either at one of our homes or um, at a local restaurant. We're kind of strewn out uh, between the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area. It's like we're each about 10 to 15 minutes from each other, just kind of down the freeway. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's always, um, it's not too long to go to anybody's home. Uh, and there's lots of restaurants and stuff if we're feeling fancy and we want to go somewhere and have a meal out. Um, but we almost, except for obviously when I'm working or if somebody has something going on, we almost always meet once a week. So sometimes also, in addition to just the four of us at Net Night, we occasionally will invite folks that are local. Um, you know, we've had some people that were sample knitters that live close to us or were traveling through that have come. Or we have a, a girl that we know. Um, I don't even know how you guys came across her. But anyways, she's come to a couple of Knit Nights with us. Um, so there's always, uh, you know, an opportunity to like maybe join us if somebody wants to, but it's not uh, very organized. So (laughs) if anybody was interested, they should probably just shoot us a message on Instagram. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Sewing or knitting? Ooh. Either one. one. That's a good question. (laughs) Um, I, oh, that's a good point. Um, I finished uh, an outfit that about, nine hours before we left (laughs) (laughs) um it's like a matching set that I'm making for a travel capsule it's a an auto vest from Seamwork that's reversible and a modified sage skirt from closet core patterns I participated in this thing called sock week (laughs) (laughs) what is that I have them they're upstairs um so I did the one in a week and then I just finished the other one like well, like two days ago or so. Yeah, nice. the sister. Mm-hmm. Nice. That was probably the last thing I finished. First thing in the morning, it's a medium brevet hot, no flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna have the best answer. <laughs> and then like my afternoon one, you know, is gonna be probably like a iced matcha or iced chai or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very fancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For in the morning, 
we got an espresso a couple years ago and I swear the coffee that comes from it is so much better. <laughs> and so I'm just like Nespresso coffee with a little bit of milk and um, turbinado sugar and it specifically has to be turbinado sugar <laughs> um, for coffee. And then uh, otherwise I'm kind of boring and it's mostly just water or Diet Coke yeah. or wine if the time <laughs> is right. <laughs> We have a trunk show in the weekend before Halloween um, in California that's about an hour away from my mom, where my mom lives, um, and I'm going to go to it. I am parlaying it into an excuse to spend, I hope Jeff doesn't watch this, more money um, on fabric than I spent on my wedding dress because I want to make a Beetlejuice dress. <gasps> oh my god. Right. And the fabric that I have, this is beautiful silk, but I want to make a really beautiful um, open lacy shawl um ancha dyed a colorway last year for our season of the witch collection called ectoplasm it is what you would think it is mm -hmm. um and a like i'm a slow knitter so like it is 400 yards of fingering weight on huge needles i'll be able to finish it <laughs> um <laughs> and then have it as like a sample um and then i'm also hoping to do um the scaredy cat cardigan by poison girls who she's no longer on ravelry um but it's also in an Ancha color um, from Season of the Witch, Harvest Moon. So it's a really cute cardigan and then has two intarsia black cats on either side. Um, I have the yarn for it in my bedroom because it might get cast on this weekend. So those are my next two. Those are my goals. Oh, wow. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing is I have a whole list of things that I want to cast on and things that I want to do. And then I will either look in my stash, which is very prolific. Um, I will look through our collective stash, which is also very prolific. And then now we have flock. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen is my entire list is going to get shredded and thrown away. <laughs> I'm going to see something pretty at flock tomorrow and cast on immediately. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, Probably a shawl, maybe a pair of socks. You're like your shawl queen too, though. I love out of a all of shawl. us, I love a shawl. Ugh, I really do. I'm not going to take your answer. I have the same answer. I mean, we, everybody. I think everybody here loves Halloween. Um, I I love Halloween. I think for slightly different reasons. Um, my daughter is nine and to get to take her trick-or-treating is like the purest joy. <laughs> it's so cute because they get all dressed up and they go around the neighborhoods and sometimes they find the house that has the king size bars and oh, that's a big deal. And then sometimes there's the house that the decorations are too scary and the kids won't go to it. It's like to see it as an adult through a child's eyes is so delightful and it it like brings me so much joy <laughs> and, and the candy tears welling up emoji Stop. right now <laughs> <laughs> um we love halloween we go very much all out um there's like 30 feet of decorations in our yard in terms of height um not all at once there's two 12 footers and like an eight footer i think um but um, I honestly think, like, for everybody, like, I like Christmas better. Mm -hmm. um, we also go out for Christmas. I, I don't know how to be subtle. Um, but um, we, I have twin nieces that are eight. And we really try to make Christmas, like, super magical for them. Um, I started learning how to sew, like, in earnest um, right before they were born. So I've made them their Christmas jammies every year. Um, and for the last three Mm -hmm. years um Jess's daughter also gets Christmas jammies every year um and we're trying to force them, them to be friends because I want them to all move here like she's grown like a weed she has that first one's like a mini skirt on her now oh, right yeah. like it the elastic doesn't fit over her arm any, and it's up to here yeah but we still have our KK jammies we can cut them off and make them short sleeves so they're so they'll work <laughs> um and just um, growing up, like, Christmas was really, really special. Like, Halloween I came into as an adult. Like, we, we Halloweened, but, you know, like, adult Halloween is different. Um, but Christmas is just still really magical um, for our family. And I also, we were talking about this last night, too. Like, I, I think all of our birthdays are holidays, too. And we love 
love gifting stuff to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, we've all talked about like it's it's more fun to like give and receive than like stuff to or from our husbands too because like we just we get each other and it's ridiculous and silly mm-hmm. and special and perfect. I have an exciting announcement to make. We are bringing back Sockmas this year, which is a make-along that starts the day after Thanksgiving and ends a few days before Christmas with the goal of making a pair of holiday socks. This year, Coven Collective is creating a magical offering for us, and we're going to get to take a look right now. So what was the inspiration for this? Because we're calling it winter magic, right? Yeah. Um, We wanted to make it where, obviously, for your um, viewership, the people who are participating in Sockmas, it's worldwide. It's not necessarily tied to any one religion or holiday. Um, So we really wanted to make it accessible to everyone and inclusive. Um, and also infuse a little bit of us into it. Yeah. So, um, coven magic. Um, and I found, um, some really beautiful inspiration images and, um, honestly, like in the pan, I dyed three different options, uh, based on two different inspiration images. This one, like in the pan was the one that I was like, Oh no, man. I don't know. Really? Yeah. And then it dried and I wound it up and, um, really liked it. Cause I was considering like, not even like submitting it when we sent you all the, um, option pictures. And now that I have um, dyed it a lot, worked through it a lot. <laughs> um, You're growing I, to love. I do love it, yeah. And, you know, blue was in the image. It was really beautiful. It's not a color that um, we work with a lot. Like we were talking earlier today, like we were winding up these minis to give out at Flock. We don't have a ton of blue. So mm-hmm. I'm actually really excited and it fits the inspiration image perfectly. And then um, when you start talking about doing the color work options, yes. um, I went with like the lightest and the darkest. And this one is mostly gray with some pink and you can see like in this color work sample that I made like the pink where it shines through yeah I don't feel like it shows beautifully like with my iPhone picture but in person it's like just enough it's just enough Um, it's so cool and I'm super excited um I'm pretty new to color work in terms of stranded color work so I'm excited to like knit up the pattern when it comes out and even this I I made so many mistakes like I didn't switch a needle size I'm a tight knitter so when I got it done I was like just cut all those floats I got you (laughs) because I have some new ideas that I'm gonna try out for like getting color work to fit for socks and it's only going to have a little bit of color work at the top so it'll be like just a little fun taste and then the rest of it you just get to enjoy your sock knitting and use this beautiful i'm so excited so it's going to be fun i have a personal plan that um i have i have big feet i knit like a 72 72 inch 72 stitch sock (laughs) (laughs) um and i have long feet so i think i'm going to be able to get two pairs of socks out of this sock set um like a you know, mid-calf pair and then a pair of shorties. Yeah. So I'm super excited because um, we want to make sure that people get as much out of it as they can. Like Definitely. It's, it's a winter treat yourself. And if you can get two pairs, all the better. You can share with somebody else or just make one for yourself. <laughs> and then you have this amazing bag. Like this fabric is so cool. Yeah. So we Almost have um, a beautiful quilting store in Spokane. Um, if you guys ever come back through, I know you're not a sewist, but it's yeah. worth stopping like just for the inspiration alone. It's probably 10,000 square feet. It's wow. huge. Um, and we have gotten to know the girls who work there, the people who work there really well. Um, I, I know this might shock you. We make friends with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I went in a couple weeks ago with my husband and I brought in the yarn and I went up to the counter and um, like just word vomited on the employee who was helping me and was like, I need a fabric that will play well with this. She gave me a few options. This was my favorite. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad it's yours too. Yes. Um, and... Uh, the cool thing was, this is called batik fabric for like quilters. You're going to know really what it is. And she said the yarn was so inspiring to her that she wanted it to kind of mimic the dye. Um, Wait, so the person at the fabric store makes this? No, no, no. She just was like, I know exactly which one. The yarn like super, like immediately she walked straight there. Like she'd be lying to it. That's so cool. So this was meant to be. Exactly. Yeah. And then our project bags are... um, this is actually a new size because we had a small, um, that's one that you have now, a little pink one. Yeah, I love that um, That is great for sock knitters, but we mm-hmm. had a lot of people that were like, you know, I it doesn't hold two skeins. So this is um, slightly larger than that. It's our medium and um, it holds quite a bit. I can fit three skeins in it. Um, you know, it's not, it's a little tight fit there, but um, your sock project will fit in there perfectly. Ancha designed our logo fabric. That's so cute. Um, and that's going to be the pockets in all of them. And it's a little bit of magic Isn't on the it inside. Cute? Um, and we will have a Notion pouch available as an add-on if somebody wants to do that that will match. Oh, cute. Um, ready to go. And, you know, so you get a different level of where you want to treat yourself. If you want to buy a gift for a special knitter in your life, 
um, if you are the special knitter in your life and want to buy yourself <laughs> a gift. But yeah, we're really, really proud at how it all came together and um, super excited. These are going to be available on Friday, October 11th so that you can get them in time to cast on with us.